Today we'll be creating this particular logo reveal or it could be any text reveal as well. Essentially, I thought the idea was very creative and that's why I'm going to teach you how you can create the exact same in Blender. In our default scene, we're going to go ahead and press X to delete our default cube. The next thing that we want is the actual text. So we'll press Shift A and search for a text object. Now we can rotate that on the X axis by 90 degrees and then press Tab to go into edit mode to type in whatever text you want. I'm going to go with the term bubbles because essentially I'm calling this a bubble text reveal. Next, I'm going to go to my text property properties down here and under the alignment I'm going to change the horizontal to center as well as the vertical to middle. Next I can press GZ2 to move it up on the Z axis by two units. Now I can expand the font and just choose whatever font I want. So I'm going to choose answer. So once you're done choosing the font you can expand the geometry tab and just give it some extrusion to make it more or less 3D. So I'm going to make the extrusion 0.1 units and then under the bevel tab I'm going to add in some bevel to make these edges nice and round. So I'll go with the bevel depth of 0.02 units and that's nice and round enough for me. Now that we have the text created, we can go ahead and create a particle system, which is going to help reveal the actual text. So I'll press shift A and search for a mesh plane and I'll press S X and just move my mouse until it's roughly bigger than the actual text that we have. Apart from that, I don't want it to be perfectly in the center. I want it to align just in front of this text. So I'll press G Y and move it all the way back to something like that. Once I have this done, I'll go to the actual particle properties and press this plus button to create a new particle system. I'll increase the number to something like 1500 and I'll have the end frame at maybe 150 with a lifetime of the particles also set to 150 but I'm going to increase the lifetime randomness all the way to one. So then I'll just expand the timeline a bit and play the animation to see what's happening. The first issue that you see is that all the particles are being formed and instantly falling down. Since I want them to go up I'm actually going to go to my scene properties and I'm going to expand this gravity tab and change the gravity value from minus 9.81 to a value of plus one so that when we actually play the animation it's going to start rising up. So once we have that, it's all right, but it's still rising up way too fast after a certain point. So I'm going to go back to my particle properties and all the way down under field weights, I'm going to reduce gravity from one to something like 0.2. So now if you play the animation, it's much slower. And I think this looks a lot better. But if we actually look at the particles, they're all going up in exactly straight lines. And I don't really want that. I want there to be some sort of motion present as well. So I'll press shift A and search for a force field and I'll choose turbulence. Now, if I play the animation, I have to make sure that there is some sort of actual motion being imparted by the turbulence, but right now there isn't much. So I'm going to select the turbulence object, go to the physics properties, and I'll increase the strength from one to something like 10. And I'll also increase the size from zero to a size of 10 as well. So now if I play the animation, there's way too much turbulence. So let's reduce the strength down to one again and reduce the size as well to one. So now when we play the animation, we can see there's just some slight motion in the actual bubbles or the particles, which I think is good enough. Maybe a strength of two will be better. So now that we have that random motion, I'm going to go ahead and add in a collision object to collide with these particles. So I'll press shift A and search for a mesh cylinder and I'll just rotate it on the Y axis by 90 degrees and I'll press GZ to bring it up and I'll just type the number two to bring it to where my bubbles text was. Then I'll press S to just scale it down till it's roughly the size of the bubbles text and then I'll press SX to scale it up till it covers the bubble text text like that as well. Then under the physics properties, I'll just choose collision and that way it becomes a collision object. And if we were to go back and play the animation, you should see that the particles, whenever they hit it, they move around. Now, I don't want the particles to go and get drifted off by this much after hitting this object. So I'll go ahead and just increase the friction all the way to one and I'll increase the damping to 0.2 and I'll increase the randomize to maybe 0.5. So now let's go ahead and play the animation. And that looks a lot better, but I still feel like there's too many particles coming up in front. So I'll take this and I'll just press GY and move it back by a little bit more as well. So now when I play the animation, there should be just a few particles coming in front and that looks good enough for my liking. So now I don't want to be able to see this collision object. So in my object properties, after selecting it, I can go to visibility and I'll just uncheck viewports and I'll uncheck renders as well. So now when I play the animation, the bubbles will still hit that object and move according to it, but it's no longer visible in my scene, which is exactly how I want it to be. So now that I have that set, I can go ahead and change these from halos to actual objects so that when I actually render the objects, they will be visible and I can change the size of them randomly. For that, I'll select the original emitter object and go to the particle properties and under the render tab, I can choose render as object. Now I need to create the object. So I'll press shift A and search for a mesh UV sphere and I'll just press control two to add in a subdivision surface of level two. Then I'll go to object and I'll choose set shade smooth so that it becomes a smooth sphere. Then I'll press G 
X and I'll move it over to the side. Now with the plane selected under the render properties for the object, I can choose that sphere that I just created and I can increase the scale to something like 0.2 and I'll increase the scale randomness all the way to one. So that looks a lot more like bubbles and that looks pretty good. However, since these bubbles are passing right through the collision object again, I'm gonna have to select the collision object, go back to the object properties and enable viewport display as well. And then once this plays out once and I make sure that everything looks fine, I can actually bake in the animation. But for the time being to have it present, I'll just change the viewport display from textured to bounds that I see through it and I can actually see what this looks like while it's still present in the viewport and all these bubbles bounce off of it. So I think this animation is looking fine enough so I can go ahead and bake the actual simulation and right now it's not long enough for all the particles to die so I'll change the end from 250 to 300 and that way it'll also become a 10 second long loop which I think is perfectly all right. So that looks good so I'll select my plane I'll go to the particle properties and then under the cache settings over here I'll go ahead and choose bake but before baking it's always best to save the project so press ctrl s and save it once it's saved press bake once it's baked you can go ahead and just switch off the cylinder from your viewport as well as your renders by pressing these two buttons and now when you play the animation the spheres should bounce off of it just as expected so that looks perfectly all right and the last thing you have to do for your actual particles is select the plane and go down to render and switch off show emitter even in the viewport display you can switch off show emitter so now if you switch off overlays you see only the bubbles that appear and disappear accordingly the next thing that we have to do is the actual texturing for that we'll set our defaults by going to our render properties switching on screen space reflections as well as blue and very important for this is going down to color management and changing the view transform from filmic to standard so that we get the whites as actual whites. Then in our output properties, we'll change the frame rate to 30 frames per second and we'll go down to the output and store the file wherever we want it to be saved. We'll change the file format to FFmpeg video and encoding, we'll change the container to MPEG4 and output quality, we'll choose Perceptory Lossless. Then we'll switch our viewport shading to render by pressing this button up here so that we can actually see the changes that we made. We also don't need the default light, so let's select it and press delete to delete it. Then we'll go to our world properties and change the background color all the way to the brightest white and that way we get a pure white background. However, the bubbles is still seen because the default material or the default shading without any material applied is actually not a complete white. So we'll go to the material properties and we can either choose the default material because we're not using that for anything else yet or we can press this plus button to add in a new material. Either way, I'll change the name to text material and the base color, I'll just drag it up to become a complete white. And that actually makes this bubble text completely invisible. But if you play the animation, because the bubbles are not completely white, as they pass behind the bubbles text, you'll be able to actually read the bubbles. Now, if you feel like there's not enough particles down here, you can always select the emitter object, go to the particle settings again, go down to the cache and delete the bake, and then change the settings by maybe moving the plane a bit closer to the bubbles or increasing the number of bubbles and things like that, and then bake it again till you get something you're satisfied with. For this tutorial, I'm not going to do that, but I'll start off with the actual texturing for these particles. So for the particles, I'll have to select the original sphere object and give that a new material by going to the material properties and adding in a new material. Then I'll just expand this timeline quite a bit and change this from the timeline to the shader editor. Now I'll rename this to particles. And what I'll do is I'll reduce the roughness all the way to zero so that there are nice specular reflections. And I'll change the base color based on the object info nodes random socket. So that way each of these spheres will get a random color. Now we don't want them to just be black or white. So I'll press shift A and search for a color ramp and I'll change this from black and white to two colors that I want. So I'll select the black slider and I'll maybe change this to this sort of a blue. And then I'll select this slider and change this to maybe this sort of a yellow. Now, if you want them to have all of these mid colors as well, well and fine, but I think I want them to either be blue or yellow. So I'll change this from linear to constant and I'll just select this yellow slider and change the position from one to a position of 0.5, which is perfectly in the center. So exactly half of them will be the blue and the other half will be the yellow. And that's actually it. The last thing that we have to do is set up the camera. So let's select the camera, press Alt G to clear location, Alt R to clear rotation, and then RX 90 to rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees. Then we'll press GZ to bring it up and we'll type two to bring it to the perfect center of the text. Then we'll press zero to go into our camera view and press GY to bring it back until the entire bubble bubbles text is present within our view. And once you're happy with the positioning of the camera and everything else, you can go ahead and press render animation. I hope this was an innovative one that will come in handy in various ways for all of you. If you enjoyed it, be sure to check out other videos on my channel because I upload videos every single day and there's definitely multiple videos present that haven't been watched by you yet.
tech that are just waiting to be discovered and watched. Until the next video comes out tomorrow, thank you so much for watching. Keep creating and don't forget to stay creative.